How you doing there folks? Baders here with another Top 10. Today we're going to look at the Top 10 Essential Mods for Fallout 4. Remember if you're playing on Xbox to keep your eyes perky for this booby toucher, and if you're playing on PlayStation, keep your eye out for this dick tickler, as those are indicators that that mod featured is available on your console. Now all the mods featured are available on PC, as we do all our mod reviews on the PC version of Fallout 4. Now go ahead and spank a dirty salamander right on his butt cheeks, and let's get to average baiting, baby! At number 10, we've got Crafting Highlight Fix. Hey, I have an idea. How about when they go to modify their weapons and armor, we put a vision obscuring bright green overglow around the object in question so they have no fucking clue what they are modifying or what the modification will look like when they add it to the weapon or armor. How did an idea like that even make it into the final game, you're probably wondering. Well, I imagine it went something like this. What are you, fucking drunk? That's the best idea I ever heard. Next, why don't we make the player character randomly shoot laser beams from his belly button and hire a guy to go around and punch everyone playing our game right in the nuts? Who let Vikram in the idea circle again? What do you mean Todd Howard already gave it a green light? Are you fucking with me, Mark? Is this real life right now? This mod allows you to disable that hard-coded vision-beating shader effect at various workbenches so you'll actually see what you're crafting. This might seem like a small fix, but it has a huge impact in the game, as most of us spend tons of time upgrading weapons and armor at the workbenches. I mean, there's nothing more aggravating than using materials just to see what an attachment will look like on a weapon or armor, than having to close out a one screen just to see it on the gun or armor and then go back in to remove or change it and then rinse and repeat this asinine process over and over and over and over again until you have something that will make your father finally love you on the inside. Well now with this mod installed, you won't have to worry about any of those shenanigans as this mod will finally fucking sort you out and make the workshop menu function more practically in the game. It will make modifying weapons and armor a breeze and save you material, time, and frustration. It's a win-win-win-win-win and a definitely must-have mod. I rate this mod one guy who thinks he's a sandwich. Someone eat me quick before I get old and soggy. At number 9, we've got the Mod Configuration Menu. Have you ever woke up screaming covered in piss and shame thinking, boy, I wish there was an easy mod configuration screen to adjust my mods in Fallout 4? Well, tuck your balls into your butt cheeks because now there is. Don't actually tuck your balls into your butt cheeks though. I don't know why I said that. Honestly, that doesn't sound fun at all. That sounds painful and unpleasant. I just wanted you guys to be as excited as me and I think I took it too far with the ball tucking. Now the mod configuration menu is a settings page for mods for easy, convenient mod manipulation and accessibility. It provides a central location for mod configuration which is accessible via the pause menu. Now you'll be able to configure more aspects of your favorite mods than you ever could before. The MCM provides a range of controls such as checkboxes, steppers, drop down sliders, buttons, text and key binds. Oh my! It's basically a Word document's wet dream. Oh yeah, look at that fucking MCM. That was me pretending to be a Word document looking at the MCM. This mod does require Fallout 4 script extender to work properly. However, it's one of those fixes that just makes modding the game a whole lot more fun and engaging. Now if you plan on modding Fallout 4 on the PC, then this is definitely a must have mod. I rate this mod one mistake that was played off like it was done on purpose. Oh, this isn't the deep part of the ocean, in case anyone was curious. At number 8, we've got Start Me Up. Start Me Up is a mod that provides an alternate start, quick start, or normal start options for your character depending on what kind of mood you're in at the time. When you use one of the alternate start paths, there are over 800 dialogue edits with voice and lip sync, so your character is no longer the mother or father of Sean or even a vault dweller for that matter. Now you won't have to run around smelling like 200 year old freezer burn and people will finally respect you in the commonwealth. This is definitely a must have mod for role playing individuals. This mod provides a menu at the beginning of the game after the bathroom scene with three distinct options. 
Alternate start is an option where you will wake up from this dream as a different person, not the parent of Sean. However, you can still be a pre-war vault dweller starting in Vault 111, but it will follow the alternate plotline where you are released from the vault by mistake. And at the terminal, you'll be able to select your own special stats and up to 20 traits, which in case you were wondering, is one more than 19. Yes, I did that math in my face. <laughs> you, you peasants, you can't do math like me. Now you can also start as a Wastelander outside of the vault and select your own special stats. Up to 20 traits, one of 38 different occupations including factions which will affect your starting gear. One of 38 different locations, how much or how little starting gear you have, your starting level and you'll also have the option to just randomize any or all of the above if you just want to roll the dice and see what happens. Wouldn't recommend that though, that's how you end up in a career you might regret. Like the war boy who has to soap up Immortal Joe's nipples before they put on his plastic shoulder pads. You don't forget that kind of shit, trust me, okay? Wink wink, nudge nudge. Now quick start just allows you to wake up from your memory in your pod in Vault 111. This follows the normal plotline but you will skip all the pre-war stuff and get to playing right away. At the terminal you'll be able to select your own special stats and again up to 20 traits. Which, in case you were wondering, is one less than 21. I know some of you guys were like, I don't know, but it is. Okay, trust me on this. Trust me on this. Also, there is a normal start, which is basically just what you think it is. This allows you to keep the mod installed, but start the game the way you normally would without the mod installed. It's basically like a no thanks, not right now button, which is nice. Now, this mod is absolutely essential for anyone who likes to roleplay in Fallout 4. I rate this mod one baby, making out with its own reflection. At number 7, we've got Legendary Modification. This mod allows you to craft legendary modifications on your armors, weapons, and even power armors. No longer will the game tell you which items are superior to other items. Now you'll be able to control which items have those special perks that make your nipples just want to push out and see the world. This mod will allow you to add legendary characteristics to your favorite weapons and armor and weapons and armor mods, making it even more unique and special in the game. Now you'll even have some options when it comes to how easy it will be to add these modifications to your weapons, armor, and power armor. The options range from hard to just straight up cheating. Now the hard version, which is called trade-in only, will not allow you to craft legendary items without scrapped material from a found legendary item. You will also not be able to detach a legendary modification once it is added, and only legendary scrap will give you the effect chips that you can use to make a new legendary modification. Meaning if you don't find a scrap with the legendary characteristics, you're plumb shit out of luck. Better luck next time, do not pass go, do not collect $200. The normal version allows you to detach existing legendary modifications and attach them to other weapons and armor as you see fit. However, you won't be able to craft legendary modifications at will. You'll need items that already contain the modification you wish to use. Now the easy version allows you to craft legendary modifications to attach to your weapons and armor. However, you will not be able to detach legendary modifications. So once they're on, they're on for good. It's just like super gluing a dildo to your face. It seems like a good idea at the time until Monday rolls around and you still have a rubber penis on your face. Make the right decision the first time is all I'm saying, okay? Or you're not going to get that job at McDonald's. Because people are going to be like, ah, oh, dude, why is there a dick on your face? And you're going to be like, dude, I can still flip burgers, all right? Doesn't matter, all right? Let me in. Now, the very easy version lets you do whatever you want, including crafting and detaching legendary modifications at will. Now, there is also a cheat version that doesn't have any perk or level requirements, nor does it have any material requirements. So you'll be able to add legendary modifications all willy-nilly at the start of the game, like a fucking lunatic. I rate this mod one dog that overheard the vet talking about the procedure. Wait, wait, wait a second, what? What did she just say about my balls? I, I don't approve of this. Uh, abandoned ship. Uh, abort, abort, uh, um, shit. <laughs> Abort! Abort! Um, I quit. I quit. I don't want to be your pet anymore. Uh, I want to do something else with my life. I always wanted to be a dancer. At number six, we've got Immersive HUD. Now, I like the heads-up display as much as the next girl, but let's face it. Sometimes I just want to run around HUDless with my dick just flapping in the wind. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You like that? You like that, Susan? Yeah. You like it when I jog by, don't you? What do you mean you're calling the cops? Okay. All right, cool. 
I respect that. However, without the HUD, it's easy to get lost and not know what the fuck is happening in the game. So it seems like it would be idealicious if the HUD was only around when it was needed, right? Wrong! Just kidding, that was right. I don't know why I told you it was wrong. That was, that was excessive, and I'm sorry. I was hurt, uh, okay? I wasn't held enough as a 34-year-old. I'm only 31, but I'm assuming in the next three years, I'm not going to get held nearly as much as I need to be. So that's why I'm so upset. I'm sorry. I lashed out. The aim of the immersive HUD is to provide the immersive feel you get from having no heads-up display whilst keeping the usefulness of actually having a heads-up display. It takes the permanently visible HUD elements such as the compass and crosshair and hides them when they are not needed or unlikely to be used. Then once you need them, they'll just spring into action. This can be done a number of ways in game. For instance, when your health goes below a certain level, the health meter will display on the screen. Also, you can have it set up that your compass only shows on screen when you aim down the sights of your gun. So now you can focus on the beauty and splendor of the decaying world space when you're traveling the commonwealth without having a little meter with an indicator point ruining your immersive adventure hard on. All of these items are customizable in the game so you can change elements to fit your playstyle. You can get yourself a super immersive HUD that has elements that only appear when you absolutely need them, or you can have HUD elements that show up like all the time. You be the judge and adjust it to your particular playstyle. Now this is an excellent mod that can completely change the way you experience Fallout 4. This is definitely an essential mod for anyone's playthrough of the game. I rate this mod one person who's terrible at parallel parking. Nailed it! At number 5, we've got HUD Framework. Have you ever looked at the HUD in the game and thought, holy floppy boobies, Batman, that HUD could really use some fucking framework? Well, Christmas fucking came early this year, boys and girls, because HUD Framework does just that. It frameworks the fuck out of the HUD. The HUD will now have a big old working frame that'll make all the kids scream for joy because we all know what framework means. I, I actually have no idea what framework means. It's actually incredibly important, and this mod is a game changer. The internet told me that, and I believe the internet. It hasn't steered me wrong yet! <laughs> HUD Framework is a UI framework that makes it possible for mods to add new UI elements to the HUD in a conflict-free way. For instance, stats, time, widgets, and more. Previously, any mod modifying the HUD would necessarily overwrite and conflict with other HUD mods. HUD Framework solves this by dynamically loading individual interface mods into the HUD at runtime. It gives modders the tools to load custom widgets and then communicate with their widgets. As we all know, modders, they need to communicate with their widgets. Can't go around on unspeaking terms with your widgets. We know this, right? You can't leave your widgets in the dark, right? You don't want a bunch of fucking uneducated widgets running around. Then where would you be? Widgetless. <laughs> I can honestly say I don't really know what this mod does, but I know it's super fucking important. But I do know this. If you want to modify your HUD in any way, shape, or form, you're going to need this mod. If you're using a mod that, that puts widgets in the game and you don't have this, you're not going to see them widgets. They're going to be invisible widgets. You're going to be like, where are my widgets? God damn it! Mom, where are my widgets? And your widgets will be nowhere to be found. You'll be upset, you'll be disturbed, wondering where all those lost widgets went. I rate this mod the most unusual Aerosmith cover band I've ever seen. At number four, we've got Valdesil's item sorting. Now this mod groups like items together and works best with Def UI. It also sorts the most commonly used items near the top for easy accessibility. It also modularizes the options to give you the ability to customize which items to sort. Let's face it, before this mod, the inventory screen was a clusterfuck of confusion, especially if you had more than one item. Going through 500 keys to listen to a fucking holotape is just unfucking acceptable However, with this mod installed, it will group like-minded items together, as well as label certain items to make inventory management that much easier. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm in my inventory, I don't want to just be bumbling around like a fucking buffoon just to find a nice balaclava for chasing joggers. No, no, I need to know where my face-concealing items are at all fucking times. Now, I've been in a police lineup, and it's not fun, especially when you're still covered in blood, but I digress. The different categories include aid, which uh, sorts your cams, devices, drinks, food, liquor, addictive cams, nuka, pre-war food, raw food, and syringer ammo. Ammo, which sorts your ammo and fuel into groupings. Armor, which requires armor and keywords community resources and use dynamic naming rules, therefore will stay sorted 
after modifying at a crafting bench. Explosives, which sorts all the explosives in the game, such as grenades, mines, signals, into groupings. Junk, which sorts different types of junk into groupings, such as resources, scrap, and tools. Miscellaneous, which sorts things like currency, lockpicks, unique items, bottles, collectibles, crafting, holotapes, hacks, notes, passwords, bobbleheads, quest items, trash, keys, and more. And also weapons, which again requires armor and keywords community resources to work properly, but will organize weapons into specific groupings. This is definitely an essential mod for Fallout 4, and it keeps everything really organized in the game. I rate this mod one unlikely superhero named Wheelman. He just rolls down hills. He's got no skills. He's not the hero we need it, but he's the one we deserve. At number three, we've got Def UI. This mod adds a new scrum diddly umptious HUD and interface to the game. Now the HUD, or heads up display as the kids are calling it nowadays, refers to the main game interface while adventuring. The HUD elements include the health bar, the action point, the criticals, the experience bar, and enemy health meters, compass, dialogue, and messages. Now this mod allows customization of all those elements. All elements can be moved, rotated, and resized. Now all this customization is sure to make anyone want to whistle Dixie, or dick a whistle, or whistle a dick, I don't know, <laughs> I just don't know anymore. I don't know. I don't know what that phrase is or means, so I'm gonna use it however I want. Now some of the elements also have some customization options, like you can actually hide parts of the element. Like for instance, is that health bar cramp in your style? Then you can just go ahead and lock it in the basement like you did your adopted son Derek in his weird rock collection. There is also optional features to show scrap components beneath items when looting. This feature requires either the included scrap tag files or a similar file from your sorting mod. Now the def inventory modifies the interface for containers, barter, and pit boy inventory screens with numerous improvements. Container and barter screens have been increased in size to fill the screen for ease of use. Now before this mod the inventory was a fucking disaster. But after this mod, it was so nice, I just wanted to put on my Big Bird outfit and pull my ass cheeks apart. Sorry, that was completely unrelated. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> um, I don't own a Big Bird costume, by the way. That's weird that I would mention that. Um, I don't do those things. I don't, I don't dress up like Big Bird and pull my butt cheeks apart. That metaphorical. I use it as an example. However, in order to really get full use out of this mod, you're also going to need to install a sorting mod, like for instance the previous mod on this list, as all of the remaining features require a sorting mod. Now with the use of a sorting mod, sorting tags can be replaced with icons in all three screens. New tabs are available in container and barter screens to limit what is displayed by category based on tags. Additional tabs have also been added to the Pip-Boy to move notes and holotapes to their own tabs based on tags. And Pip-Boy items can be rolled up in a single entry based on tags. Now Def UI overhauls the menu tab and makes it a lot more organized and easy on the eyes. It basically takes that ugly duckling and it hits it right in the face with a shovel and replaces that super dead ugly duck with a much more alive attractive duck. Look at that. Isn't that great? Look at it. Super, super alive. Now when you're going through your inventory, you can find, sell, trade, or drop items with ease in comparison to the vanilla game. Def UI is for winners, and you definitely want to be a winner, don't you? So go on, join the party, get in, the water's fine, it's nice and warm, it's pee warm. I rate this mod that moment you realize why your plane ticket was so cheap. Alright everybody, here we go, hold on! At number two, we've got Visceral ENB. Now, have you ever wanted to make Fallout 4 look more hump-worthy and itastic? When you look at Fallout 4, do you want a rainbow of orgasmic yet confusing sexual emotions to go rampaging through your cerebellum? When you turn on Fallout 4, do you want an angel to get its wings? Then boyos, this mod will make you cry like E.T. after he got his phone bill from Planet Earth. What the fuck are roaming charges? I built that phone out of an etch-a-sketch of speak and spell on a broken coat hanger. How did, how did they bill me for this? This mod makes Fallout 4 look realistic, but also cinematic. It makes every rock, tree, and scene come to life in the game. Now the only thing more impressive than the visuals from this mod is a janitor that solves complex math problems when nobody's looking. Let me ask you this, do you like big perky titties? Now are big perky titties improved or damaged by having soapy wet bubbles just prancing around on top of the nipples? Improved, right? Yeah, no one's like, oh, that made it worse. No, no one would say that. That would be fucking insane. <laughs> All right. He's a lunatic. He doesn't like soapy wet boobies. 
They would lock you up in an insane asylum and they would throw away the key. Well, this mod is if Fallout 4 soaked up its boobies. It makes the game so inviting it's hard to look away. Every scene just pops out and says, holy soapy boobies, look at me. If you want your game to look its absolute best, then this is definitely an essential mod for Fallout 4. I rate this mod two dogs having a real doggy conundrum. Silly dogs and their silly shenanigans. What are they up to? Who knows? What do you mean you forgot where you buried it? We need that device to become human again, you idiot! And at the number one spot, we've got full dialogue interface. Now, do you like mindless, seemingly endless ambiguity and vagueness where you never know where or what your character stands for and every action is a roll of hypothetical dice? Well, I don't, and so that's why this mod is an excellent addition to the game. Normally, more words is a real deal breaker for me. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm like anyone else. I love to curl up late at night with a great book and just color until my fingers hurt. More often than not, I just feel like words they take away from my favorite Disney characters. But not this time. No siree. This is one of those rare circumstances where more words is a good thing. Sometimes when you don't have enough words, it can be really confusing. It can be really upsetting, okay? For instance, just think about an online dating profile pic that just says, I like kids in all capital letters. That's not enough words. It's not enough information. No, 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 you need more words. You need more information, okay? Maybe that person really likes kids in an innocuous way, or maybe that person is a kidnapper, okay? Who knows? All I know is that person really likes kids. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I like to know what my character is going to say before he or she says it. Fallout 4's dialogue interface was so simplistic, you didn't really know what to think. Literally, you had no idea what your character was going to say until he or she said it. And there's nothing worse than miscommunication. A full dialogue interface aims to fix that issue by giving the full line of dialogue in the interface for you to read prior to telling Preston Garvey you want him to tell you about every settlement and danger, regardless of what's going on in your world at the time. Now this is a simple fix, but it makes a huge difference in the game, letting you interact with the AI more precisely and more reflective of your perspective at the time. This is definitely an essential mod for Fallout 4. I rate this mod one guy pretending to be a doctor. All right, get over here. Let me take a quick look at your brain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just what I thought. You were insane in the brain. Mm-hmm, I could see it here. All you need to do to fix this is take two scoops of ice cream and tape your ass cheeks together and you'll be good as new. Thanks again for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to bitch slap that subscribe button like it's three weeks behind on your rent. <laughs> bitch! Where's the money, bitch? Where's the money? Where is it? Also, go ahead and hit that bell icon too because apparently YouTube thought there should be extra steps. Why not, right? I'd like to subscribe, but first I have to click this and this and do this. Oh, it needs an email. All right, and this. Okay, fuck. Just tell me when he's uploading. Fuck! Once you do all that, if you're lucky, at the stroke of midnight, a tiny little average baiter's fairy might come and tickle your butthole. Also, if you want to see another top 10 similar to this one, then go ahead and click that sexy little icon at the bottom left of the screen. And I hope to see you all again next time for another top 10.